Here follows the first model I have created to illustrate some of the previously talked points in the introductory video, the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter produces estimates of hidden variables or states when you have inaccurate and uncertain data. It is used in many areas and the words hidden and uncertain definition are really important for us in this case. At the end of the day, unrelated to the previously stated question, I have uncertainty present in my financial time series model. It is clear that I cannot observe the sensation probabilities between different states in the markets. And to correct that, you make the assumption uh, that the past somehow holds value of information to predict the future. The reality is that mm, you know the basic rules, but the interactions create a complex environment in which there are certain hidden states you cannot directly observe. Hence, you need to assume that there is uncertainty present in the decision making just to logically approach the research hypothesis. I will talk about uncertain outcomes and various approach in a bit that will be also really interesting. Let's first get to the code implementation to continue the analysis. In this case, I won't focus a lot on the theory back in the Kalman filter because I want to make these lectures as practical as possible. However, I will leave some resources. I personally found useful in the past to understand how it works. So basically, what I have done here is I have created two classes, one for working with the close uh, of an asset or a portfolio, and at the same time, uh, we can work also with the returns, and we will see the both plots. And I just uh, have defined uh, different import statements, and I have imported the uh, base model that is just, uh, you can find it in the model.py script. That is just a way of creating a very basic model that we will override the different methods that it has. At the same time, I have also imported the filterpy library that holds all the necessary classes to work, uh, to work with the Kalman filter. All the methods in the class have different comments so that you can go directly with the different definitions and understand what each method is doing. If you had any doubt regarding that, just uh, be sure to comment that into the comments box below so that we can take a look and try to help you as much as possible to fix that or to even give more information about the implementation. The Calvin filter is the analytical implementation of Bayesian filtering recursions, so for linear Gaussian state space models. With this definition, I have introduced some way the Bayesian approach to modeling, but, but let, let's set it apart for now. Kalman filters are based on linear dynamical systems discretized in the time domain. They are kind of modeled on a Markov chain built on linear factors, perturbed by errors that may include or not Gaussian noise. I hope that you are enthusiastic about this modeling technique because it has two of the components that I have previously presented, that is market modeling and uh, Bayesian approaches. One of the caveats, depending on how you interpret it, of the Kalman filter is that it doesn't take uh, the residuals into account. That is, it doesn't explicitly look at how much it has failed in the prediction when doing its prediction at the end of the day. So apart from that, the normal Kalman filter is a linear model. Although it is a linear model, it is interesting to see how it applies to financial time series, taking into account that they are dynamic and exhibit that nonlinear interactions. So let's see some graphs to see it working. I have just hit the play button onto the Kalman filter close class. And Simply stated, the Kalman filter smooths the series and creates a moving average like uh, behavior in the close price series. Here, it is assuming that some noise, moreover, Gaussian noise, is involved in the data retrieval process. The hypothesis or assumption that noise is involved in the analyzed time series lets us to think that there is some process involved you don't or I don't necessarily understand its dynamics. If that happens, the resulting idea of using the Kalman filter to get that noise out is very reasonable. We can look at even other graphs to see how the moving average kind of behavior is stated, like I said, in DAX, even in the euro dollar, or in the GBP GPY. 
In the define model parameters method, there are defined many parameters that are needed for the Kalman filter to work. You can even tweak them and see how this results in the graphs. Basically, the intuition behind having these parameters is that the common filter needs to know from where it should start. The input, output data dimensions, and also the transition matrices uh, to start with. The Kalmar filter then does an update predict loop in which it takes the actual observation, includes it, and then makes the following prediction based mostly uh, on that uh, actual observation. Finally, it can be very interesting to analyze how Kalman filters differ from moving averages and how they can be very suited for financial time series analysis than them. In this case, you have pretty much all the ingredients to make that research work for you if you look at the different implementations they have done in the uh, GitHub repository of the quant research environment. To wrap up this series, Apart from the research at common filter, there are alternatives like the standard common filter that are in order to make state estimations on nonlinear systems, one of the possible approaches is to linearize that system that we are researching around its current state and force that filter to its this previous uh, linearized version on your system as a model. This is the standard common filter I said. Furthermore, the anesthetic common filter proposes a different solution in which you use not just one point but many points, the so-called sigma points, to approximate with the fact that more number of points, more precise the approximation it will be. Furthermore, you can have here and look at different research ideas and you can also understand that the common filter may be more suited for estimating things that change over time and that the common filter even lets you add more information about how the system you're filtering works. Finally, if you have any doubts, comments, or want me to tackle certain topics related to this type of modeling, please do comment below so that we can start a discussion and uh, develop more this content, and so that I can dissect also them in subsequent tutorials. See you in the next one.